Now, 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 that, that that don't kill me can only make me stronger. I need you to hurry up now, cause I can't wait much longer. All right, hello, it's Alex Grayson here. Welcome to my first video podcast on the scientific method. Now, to understand the scientific method, we first have to understand how scientists go about obtaining knowledge. And there, there are two ways that scientists go about this. There is discovery science and explanatory science. Discovery science is the more straightforward of these two ways that scientists gain information, mainly because it involves basic observations, measurements, and descriptions of things such as what is there, how big is it, how heavy, what color, we identify species. For example, in taxonomy, we identify species through looking at these things. And this leads us to inductive reasoning, which is to draw conclusions or to draw conclusions from specific observations. Another example of inductive reasoning is in cell theory where, let's say, a group of scientists observed that the various animals all have cells, and that given that observation, they generalized that all animals and organisms are made of cells. The one small problem with discovery science is that sometimes these loose observations about nature can't really gain you any more knowledge about how and why something is the way it is. So in, to answer these deeper questions, you, we, we become led to explanatory science. Explanatory science, you're probably familiar with it, but you don't know it. It's really the one you're familiar with right now, is, which is where you're going to create a, hypo a hypothesis, then create an experiment to test the hypothesis to see if it's correct. And this form of science uses something called deductive reasoning instead of inductive reason reasoning, which you use in discovery science. And with deductive reasoning, you're going to form a general premise, which is going to be your hypothesis. And you would reason what you would expect to be true, given that your hypothesis is correct. Here's a situation where you could use explanatory science, because my problem is, why is it dark in here? And my hypothesis, and with if I use explanatory science, would be it is dark in here because the light the light switch is turned off. And then I could test this by saying, if my hypothesis is true, if I turn the light switch back on, the lights will come on and it will be bright in here again. One of the main things you're going to want to remember when using this method to, to gather information is that it requires you to show your evidence. So, to show my evidence in my situation. I have the light switch here, and it's very dark in here. And in order to fix my problem, as I stated in my hypothesis, I'm going to turn the light switch on and see if it fixes it. And, okay, I turn the light switch on, and, well, obviously it's brighter than here, so there is my evidence that fixed my problem, so, okay. A useful thing to remember when following the scientific method is that it's just a thought process you should go through each time you conduct an experiment, and it's not really a rigid set of rules. But the basic scientific method is going to consist of some observations that you make, some questions you're going to have about your hypothesis, which is usually going to be an educated, an educated guess or a possible answer to your question, and your experiment you're just going to have an independent variable, a dependent variable, and some controlled variables that could that could potentially alter the dependent variable that you not want to change and your experimental groups which are the trials where you have changed the independent variable and your control group which is where the trial in which the independent variable is not varied in any way just acts as a standard for a comparison to see if the independent variable is responsible for any given change and possibly you might want to have a repeated experiment just in case your first experiment might have any errors in it where it could be considered false and you're eventually going to want a conclusion that shows all of your data and make sure it supports your supports or refutes your hypothesis now here's some final thoughts for you guys you have to really understand with this that science is always changing and never complete you can never really be 100% certain in science because there's always the possibility that a new observation or experiment will show that our current understanding, understanding of the world is inaccurate or incomplete. This is not a weakness of science, but happens to be a huge strength. 
By leaving room for change, science has the ability to continually advance and improve. This is also why science is so darn exciting. Wow, it really is exciting. It just really is, you know. And just because there's always something new to be learned, which is pretty impressive. So, hope you guys enjoyed my podcast today. Hope I maybe I'll make more of these. I don't know if you guys like them. Possibly, maybe I won't make them. But hope you enjoyed it. Hope you maybe learned something. So, thanks for watching.